Okay, I'm Chris Avina with American Outdoor News. We're here for another episode of our podcast with uh, Andrew Schiepo from Cubic Mini Stoves. Uh, Andrew, thank you so much for coming on. Hi, Chris. Thanks for having me. Now, you have a very unique niche in in the uh, in the wood burning stove market or the uh, alternative heat market. Uh, how did your company come about? Yeah, so the owner wanted to have a uh, heat source that would basically eliminate humidity and extend the boating season. So in September, instead of closing things up, he can prolong it. And um, yeah, so he made himself a prototype, installed it on the boat, and it actually worked really, really well. So he went back to the drawing board, tweaked it a bit, uh, you know, installed that one, and over time, the wood stove brought attention to him and people came by asking him what it's about. They wanted one and it just spiraled from there. It's funny how word of mouth spreads fast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's how the company really started. It's just like, uh, you know, a necessity for something that didn't really exist. And mm -hmm. it just, uh, yeah, took off. Now, how long have you been in business? Um, the idea for the stove, I believe, was 2012. Um, 2013, we started producing more and that was just by, uh, you know, suppliers coming in saying, Hey, we like the stove. So I want to buy one and we would make it for them. And then I believe our website went live in 2014. Wow. So you, you fairly young company and you're growing expeditiously over a really short period of time. Yeah, you can say that. Yeah. So the, the applications for your stove, how many different models do you have? We have uh, two models with two different trims being black and brass. Um, the application is pretty much um, recreational. So you're looking at things that are primarily transport based. So you're looking at things like boats, vans, um, you know, some RVs, um, ice fishing shacks, uh, things of that nature. Um, residential is uh, not really allowed just because of the restrictive use of a non-certified appliance in a residence. Um, so that's why when you have something like a transportation uh, situation, uh, the same residential uh, rules do not typically apply. Okay. So what is the heating capacity? How much area do these stoves heat? Yeah. So, I mean, in, if you're looking in terms of area and volume, um, the cub is designed to heat up to 200 square feet with generally low ceilings. And uh, that's more for spring and fall use. When you're looking at uh, the Grizzly, uh, it can heat between 200 and 400 square feet, uh, generally for spaces that have higher ceilings. And that's more for winter use because whenever you have, um, you know, really low temperatures outside, now you're starting to deal with how well the space is insulated, you know, ceiling rate and so on. But uh, yeah, you're looking at spaces generally below 400 square feet. I know a, a boat or a van or an RV really isn't insulated the way a, a house would be. So that pushing out a lot of heat in a small space. Exactly. And, the, you know, like a lot of our stoves also get installed in uh, school buses or renovated school buses, uh -huh. which typically have a lot of windows. So when you have that amount of windows, you get a lot of heat loss through there. Um, but a lot of people who do own school buses go through uh, the, the proper process to insulate it if they are going to run into, uh, you know, extreme winter conditions. And, you know, the stove generally heats from the cab in the front all the way to the back, and you're looking at about a 40-foot 40, 40 uh, run for a full-size of, for a full uh, size school bus. Wow. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. So, so yeah. technically, if it was certified for home use, you could really put it in a bedroom or a game room and heat it comfortably. That's right. That's right. And that the nice part about that is you're not relying on a massive wood stove to heat up your entire space. You're trying to just either create ambiance, take the chill out, remove humidity, just to give it a little, you know, comfort. And uh, yeah, there's not much of that on the market right now. Um, so far, we're not certified, but we intend to be in the future. What does it take to be certified? It's quite the process. It, uh, you know, you have to basically do your own testing in-house, determine your distance of clearances and so forth and then provide that to the third party certifier and they're going to test it based on your measurements and distances. So once we do our own testing uh, according to their methodology, 
then we can go ahead and get it certified for home use. Um, until now, what we've used was marine standards, which if you look at like a, a boat would be the most dangerous place to have a wood stove. So yeah. if you can maintain your, your distance to combustibles so that the services do not exceed what's okay for a boat, then you're sure it's going to be safe for almost any other application other than a boat. Now, the, uh, does it burn more wood than uh, a regular wood stove, being that it's a, a, in a small space? So the, I would look at wood like potential energy. So whenever you take wood and you put it inside the stove, the thing that determines how long it'll burn, how much heat output and all that is how much wood you can actually fit into it. Um, so the stove is actually ex extremely small. When you're looking at the Grizzly, it's, uh, the, its body is about 13 tall, 11 wide, and maybe eight or nine inches deep. So you're looking at maybe, you know, the volume of a shoe box and a little bit. So because of that, um, you might have to refill it every one to three hours. And then your embers will go for several hours after. Um, but that's going to depend on the wood you're burning, how you set the stove, the flue system, the weather outside. There's a lot of things that determine how long of a burn time you can get. Yeah. But uh, generally, it's quite good for its size. That's, that's really pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we achieved that also with a secondary uh, combustion system that pulls air from underneath. And then it reintroduces the superheated air with the smoke. Mm -hmm. so that you can produce heat with energy that would be otherwise lost up the food pipe. Hmm. What if, uh, uh, now this wouldn't be in a home, what if I built a um, sauna in my yard? A lot. I get that question uh, quite often. Um, so our stoves were never designed to be used in a sauna or in such a humid environment. Um, I do know that clients have used it in um, sauna applications. I haven't really heard how well it worked or didn't work. Um, the only other thing is typically with a sauna stove, you normally have like rocks that get heated and then you spill water on top of it. Yeah. And that would have adverse effects on our stove because you would have the, the heat, the heat would get pulled from the water and then you would have, you know, condensing of the material real fast. There's, there's always a way to figure something out. You, you, yeah. you, put, you generally put the stones in the bucket, put the bucket on the stove, you pour the water on the stones. That's right. That's right. As long as you can keep that water from hitting the stove, it should be good. Um, but again, it was never designed for such a, a humid environment because you're trapping all that humidity in a small space, yeah. which you know, could go against the, the wood stove because the wood stove is actually a natural dehumidifier. So as you're burning the, uh, the wood, you're, the air inside the space um, gets drier, which in most circumstances, when you're looking at a vehicle, that's what they want because if they, they they can wake up in the morning and there's condensation all over the windows and when you light up the stove you you slowly see the condensation on the windows start to disappear and then inside become more comfortable wow yeah now i know in a, a, a with a lot of wood stoves people put um like a pot of water on it just to keep the uh moisture in the air uh do they do that with your stoves as well yeah yeah sometimes they will um, also, boiling water on top for coffee, tea, porridge, things like that. Breakfast being cooked on top of the stove is quite often to see. And we also have a mini roaster option that you can put on top of the Grizzly, which would essentially turn the top of the stove into an oven. And there you can cook things. You can bake things. I've seen banana bread, um, muffins, pretty much anything you can think about. Montreal smoked meat. It's uh, only left up to your imagination. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, you know what? If you're an outdoorsman, you figure a way. You know, they, you, you, you gather your uh, your herbs and spices. You shoot your uh, you shoot your your meat, and uh, yeah, the rest is up to you. Exactly. That's great. Yeah, we're going to take a quick break here to acknowledge some of our sponsors. Uh, Underwood Ammo, always a standard of excellence. Um, I don't shoot anything but it, but uh, Underwood, it's a great, uh, great ammo. Uh, Pyro Putty uh, and Phone Scope, always innovative, coming up with new products, new uh, ways to make uh, your outdoor life easier. And um, Hunt of a Lifetime, uh, we're going to see, we're going to hear a, a quick commercial from them and we'll be right back. We love our children. We protect them. We guide them. We prepare them for life in the world. With all that we do, from deep in our hearts, we cannot control all things. 
Life-threatening illnesses and disabilities affect far too many of our children each year. While we cannot change the circumstance, we can make dreams come true. Dreams to provide hope, to provide spiritual healing and strength, to provide moments of happiness and relief in the hardest of times. We can give a glimmer of light and hope in a time of darkness and despair. Join huntofalifetime.org to help make dreams come true, to provide hope for children with life-threatening illnesses and disabilities. Hunt of a Lifetime is a nonprofit organization fulfilling dreams for hunting and fishing trips to youth 21 and under with life-threatening illnesses and disabilities. Visit huntofalifetime.org to learn how you can make a difference. Okay, and we're back. And we are here with uh, Cubic Mini Stoves. And, you know, I, I got to ask, especially in this time, what about the supply chain of actually getting the material you need to build the product and shipping it out? Yeah, so that has uh, been some careful planning. Um, so we saw that coming from, you know, a little distance away. Uh, so what we did was being like the producer of your own product, it's almost a double-edged sword. Um, so for that, we had to take the quantities that we sold, extrapolate growth, and then order in consequence of delay. And when we did that, we were able to maintain ship times um, so that the delays weren't as terrible as they were in the first six to 10 months of the pandemic, where you would place an order and we'd only be able to ship it out eight to 10 weeks after it was placed. Mm -hmm. um, but since then, we've kind of, you know, taken a different approach, order in larger quantities. So we have everything on hand. And now we're pretty much shipping out, uh, you know, I'd say one to three days after the order's placed. Wow. Any yeah. problem getting any of your materials now uh, due to uh, everything going on? Or Yeah, so there's certain products that uh, take a bit longer to get. So you have to order it earlier and then order it in larger quantities so that what we do have will last. Um, we've had to pivot on a couple materials uh, and change either the gauge, uh, the finish or whatever it is so that we can get our hands on it. So be, be it stainless steel is one of the, the things that, you know, became an issue. But, uh, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. And we found a workaround. So we were lucky on that one. That's amazing. Now, we saw um, the uh, truckers in Canada. Yeah. They had quite the caravan. Uh, really an amazing thing to say, um, banding together. And um, what about them coming into the U.S., shipping into the U.S.? Are they, are they having an issue with that, coming across the border, if they're vaccinated, unvaccinated? I mean, this whole thing's a mess. Yeah, it's quite the, uh, quite the debacle right now. Um, in terms of shipping, to be honest with you, um, I'm not seeing many delays at all. And we ship uh, to many different locations, uh, not only the United States. Um, some shipping companies we use use airplanes, others use trucks. Um, it really depends on where the order is going, how it's getting there, and so on. But from what we're hearing from our clients, the shipping process has not been terribly impacted. And, you know, we're thankful for that. Because if somebody needs a stove for their heat and their, their stove is blockaded by whatever reason, uh, that doesn't do us or our clients any favors. But uh, so far, no, no disruption in that aspect at all. Very fortunate. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, I think there's something that we overlooked. Name of your company is Cubic's Mini Wood Stoves. How big are these? Yeah, so, I mean, if you look at just the size of the firebox, or if you include the legs and the rail, um, overall dimension, you're looking at about 11 by 15 by 13. That's in inches for the uh, Grizzly. Okay. And then the Cub would be about 11 wide, call it 12 tall, and about 9 deep. So it's very, if you're looking at it, it's about that wide. Wow. About, yeah, it's same depth and then height, you're looking at something like that. So the, you know, the, the biggest comment is the amount of heat for the size that it takes. You never want to put something like in, in a small space like a van, the larger the stove, the larger uh, your clearances to combustibles have to be. So no. if you were to install a big stove in your van, the thing would take up the entire back of the van. Whereas if you have a small wood stove, now your clearances are reduced, it takes up less space, and then you have more room to use. Um, so yeah, the efficiency of space to heat output is uh, 
is quite remarkable. It's really a mini powerhouse. Yeah, absolutely. What do they weigh? So the grizzly is about 40 pounds and the cub is I lost your audio. How much? How what is the cub weigh? Yeah, so the cub is 27 pounds, the grizzly is 40, and the lightweight construction, either it's pretty durable. I mean, if you look at the grizzly, the top plate is three sixteenths of an inch thick, the bottom plate is three sixteenths of an inch thick, body is one eight, and we have a half inch thick insulation all the way around. Mm -hmm. So the construction is durable, but it, it, it's pretty light for what it is, which allows us to mount it to the wall. And when you mount it to the wall, you're also saving square footage and you can store things below it and it becomes very versatile in that aspect as well. What kind of flashing is required if you get it mounted to the wall or, or even have it on the floor? You got to have uh, some kind of barrel behind it, correct? That's right. So you typically need to heat proof it um and make sure that the surrounding space is protected adequately um our mounting options were designed like i said earlier with marine standards in mind um stainless steel is a component that allows us to reflect heat away from the surface um we have a one inch airspace that's you know generally used in most wood stove shielding that acts as a heat buffer mm -hmm. and then you have airflow on the other side so that your heat doesn't continuously climb and by doing that we get to reduce our clearance from 20 inches down to three. Wow. So you don't need to keep it 20 inches away anymore. It goes right to the wall and then you're you're nice and safe. What about the flu system? Yeah, so the flu system is quite interesting. When you look at it, it's a double wall pipe that comes off the stove. So that's a pipe within a pipe. And then just prior to exiting the ceiling, it turns into a triple wall insulated pipe, which goes all the way to one foot above the highest point of the roof. And there's a lot of physics that we've determined over time to really dial that flu system in. And the best way to explain the flu system is that it's the engine of the stove. The stove is really just a box that you make a fire in. The piping is what allows it to work and become efficient. So the, the flu system is what's really throwing off the heat. Well, it's what's allowing you to have a ma uh, to maintain a fire to have an efficient fire. So imagine if you build a fire outside and it's just a campfire. There's no air intake, there's no pipe, there's no nothing. So it's very inefficient. Then when you put it inside the stove, now you're controlling the airflow, the rate of air that's going into it. And then the rising heat inside the pipe that wants to rise is pulling the air into the stove. So it's that functionality that really makes it what it is. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so what's next for Cubics? Yeah, that's a great question. So like I said earlier about the certification, we're uh, going to go down that road or we're going to attempt to at least, which I'm pretty confident we will pass. Um, after that, we're looking at uh, different uh, products and um, mounting options for our stoves, as well as accessories to add more functionality to it. And those products should be in testing in the next couple of months and then available uh, within the year. That's great. I, I would definitely consider putting one in my bedroom. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> but all right. Well, I appreciate your time. Uh, we look forward to what you have coming in the future and uh, expanding your applications. And um, where can we find you? Yeah, that's uh, cubicminiwoodstoves.com. That'll bring you to our website. And then from there, you can hit the contact us page. And then send us an email or call if you'd like, and we'd be glad to help. And you on social media as well, Facebook and Twitter? and uh, Facebook. Uh, we're pro predominantly on Instagram, Facebook, um, and a little bit of YouTube. Uh, this year, we're going to be looking to expand to other platforms as well. Great. Thanks again. I look forward to seeing you, uh, new products and, and what we have coming up. And uh, I appreciate you coming on. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure, Chris. Thanks a lot for the opportunity.